tonight, in all truthfulness, we are going to talk about drift fishing. And it's funny, every time nowadays you mention drift fishing, uh, folks go, oh yeah, you're flossing, or you're just, uh, yeah, you're dragging long leaders or whatever. That is not typically the history of drift fishing. So it all started out drift fishing, believe it or not. If you were a bank fisherman back in the day, you were a drift fisherman. And we're talking leaders of 18 to 30 inches uh, typically is what we're talking about. And I'm going to walk through a number of different presentations here that you can, or offerings that you can present out there as you're drift fishing uh, with your weight, believe it or not, actually tick, ticking along the bottom. And we're not talking about a bunch of weight that is you know, you're throwing out there on the bottom of the river and it's starting and stopping where you got to lift your rod and get it to move and, and, and drift on through the hole. We're not talking about that. We're also not talking about using enough weight that your, your rod tip is constantly just bouncing like crazy, okay? We're talking about matching current speed in water that's conducive to holding steelhead that is actually going through at natural current speed. And if you're doing it right, and we're going to show you how to do that tonight, uh, your, your lead is basically tapping bottom about every three feet or so, about every yard. You're just coming in contact with bottom, keeping your presentation down in the strike zone. Thanks for checking out this video. We have many, many more videos for you to view. Simply hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you always get notified on our new content, always get notified when we go live on our channel. And of course, spread and share our content. Push this out to as many people as you know and help us build our channel. Hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, do it now. When we talk about drift fishing, I'm gonna break down these rods and show you different riggings on them. We're gonna talk about different weight uh, options that you have to uh, figure out exactly what type or how to present your weight. But uh, at the end of it, this is considered terminal gear, okay? You basically are offering them something that if everything goes right and it's a hatchery fish, it's a terminal day, so it's terminal gear. We have uh, a number of things that we can use on this board that you can drift fish. And everything on this board that you can drift fish, you can also bobber dog. So for all you folks that are so uh, happy with your results and how easy bobber dogging is, it actually all started with, uh, with drift fishing. Back in the day, we would drift fish all this stuff long before you ever took a float, stuck at eight feet or 10 feet above this particular presentation, and it was just drifting through the drift. So if we look over here to my left, Starting off, uh, one of the old tried and trues, the uh, the YBC Spin and Glow, been around forever. Uh, oftentimes back in the day, if I was drift fishing with Spin and Glow, I'd run a double hook setup because I'm putting a sand shrimp on there, um, which is a great offering for steelhead, okay? And uh, as we let that work through the water, that's just the lead is dragging. And as you can see on this board, most of these are all rigged with stick leads because anymore, if I'm drift fishing, um, that's pretty much all I'm using. I'm gonna walk through different leads in a little bit, but for me, it's all about the stick lead, drift fishing, matching the current speed, and um, presenting an offering that moves along naturally, one that doesn't constantly start and stop. Uh, spinning glows have been used for years. Corky's uh, is something I grew up on. A lot of folks have a chest drawer of corkies. Here's a lot of the old ones that I have from back in the day, all various colors, all different sizes. Um, simply, believe it or not, back in the day, you could get steelhead on something as simple as a size 10 or 12, a uh, little corky, this pink pearl and that sunrise combination back in the day uh, would get it done with a single hook no bait, no scent, no nothing. No, you're not flossing because, again, you're using about a 20-inch leader in a single corky. And yes, fish will bite those. It's no different than nowadays when they uh, will go after a bead. So just a different type of uh, uh, buoyancy, a different type of feel for them. Obviously, this is a hard, hard surface that they would bite on. But steelhead are driven by, by color and color contrast for sure. And back in the day in clear water, some of these colors were hard to beat. If there was a steelhead in there, believe it or not, it wouldn't take much. If you were first line to pass through the water, a simple little uh, corky, a hook, and uh, you were in business. So corkies worked forever. They still do. They haven't gone away. You can still use them, uh, whether you uh, end up setting up a double rig or fish that single. As we progress, soft plastics become uh, pretty prevalent nowadays. You know, egg clusters that look like our old oaky drifters have become pretty popular. There's a number of manufacturers out there making soft egg clusters. You can pin those up just like you would a bead. It's a soft plastic. It's neutral buoyant. Uh, you put a hook on there. It, it typically, depending on size of the hook, I typically cut a couple of these. If you can find them with a size 3, believe it or not, is a great size hook to run with a soft plastic. 
Down here I got one of the new uh, BNR soft beads. You know, bead fishing has become all the craze. You can actually drift fish beads and they do very well. Um, all different sizes. Uh, B&R for me is one of the go-to's obviously they have so many options different colors these pearl uh, these multicolor ones that look like that faded out uh, bleached out egg that is just kind of tumbling along down the river oranges and peaches some of them with white accents uh, these all work based on water conditions and typically a single bead of various sizes depending on water clarity and depth is going to get it done yes they drift fish very well a lot of folks fish them under bobbers either bobber dogging or uh, or suspended under a float but drift fishing works great believe it or not you can also drift fish with uh, soft plastic worms put that with a corky again I use this setup a lot bobber dogging but you know what it works very well when I'm simply drift fishing you can drift fish soft plastics now one of the go-to's for years is making homemade regs. This one's a little on the large side. I use that, that puffier yarn. After it gets wet, I typically trim these down a little bit depending on water clarity. So I always like to make them a little bigger just in the event I'm fishing waters that are uh, with minimal clarity. I have a nice big profile that's gonna get them. Typically match that up with some, some egg or some shrimp in the bait loop there. Okay, gonna cinch that up, pull that down. This is just made out of backer rod and multicolors of yarn. The reasons for multicolors, two or three multicolors on your rags is because of contrast. Again, steelhead key in on color contrast, so I want to make sure I give them a lot of colors to choose from. Uh, a little diversion from that, but still kind of the same idea, is just simply a yarny, multicolor yarny ball. Uh, they're somewhat buoyant, but uh, you can fish those with a size one or a size one-aught hook is going to do very well. These yarnies are great. They're very inexpensive to make and by drift fishing those they work fantastic now one thing you can do when it comes to yarn no matter if it's on a uh, a, um, a rag or a yarn ball is by adding um, some of your oils i typically use mike's uh, i think it's the best in the market because of how natural they smell and how well they work but anytime i add oil an oil-based product to any of your yarns and it absorbs it not only does it add scent it adds a tremendous amount of scent but it uh, also adds buoyancy. You'd be amazed at how much higher this yarn ball will float in the water column simply by adding some oil to it so you have scent and you have additional buoyancy with your yarnies. If you're not adding scent to your yarnies, you need to start doing that. It gives them something else to, uh, to key in on. You draw them with the color, they have a little scent, um, and again, it adds increased buoyancy. Now, one of the old standbys that we've used for years, if you grew up in the 70s and 80s fishing, is the old Oki Drifter. Uh, my buddy Herzog, for years, uh, was reintroducing the old theory of the Oki Drifter, the original ones, back in the day. That's what these are. These seldom get fished because I just want to hold on to them because they're not very easy to find. But in fact, going back to it, the Oki Drifter is one that's been around for years back in the day, uh, much like the Corky, you could simply fish a single Oki Drifter, a size one or one odd hook, and steelhead would absolutely go after those things. And you know, for all intents and purposes, still do today because it's been tried and true, it's something that works. Any and all of these will work because they are buoyant or neutral buoyant. Some of them have action, they have color, they have contrast. They're exactly what you want to utilize for drift fishing. So how do we get there? What is drift fishing all about? Set this down real quick. Okay, so a lot of it starts with our lead options. Okay, now for me, um, here is a typical drift fishing setup. I like to use a bait casting setup. I typically, from fishing the bank, I'll run a nine to nine and a half foot rod. As you can see on here, I have a reg lure, and of course, I have my stick lead. I have about a 20 inch leader. I have my main line, which because I also use this rod for bobber fishing, I have a top shot of 20 pound monofilament tied onto my braid. Now, for years I advocated, hey, don't use braid for drift fishing. If you get hung up, you leave a lot of braid in the river. I would say that to folks that tie their braid directly to their swivel at the terminal end of their tackle. If you put on about 12 or 18 foot of monofilament top shot, you have a, a very small section in there with stretch capability. 
You also have a break off uh, portion of your line that if it does get wrapped up into something, you have to snap that off. If you're gonna leave anything in the river, it's gonna be that monofilament and not the braid, which is better for the environment. So you can use braid for drift fishing, and I actually advocate that you do because it telegraphs so much better as you go through your drift, you can feel that weight touching the bottom every so often, which is exactly what you're striving for. So put that top shot on there. Uh, run your stick lead or whatever weight choice we're gonna run through here that you can choose from. You know, again, 18 to 36 inch liter. That's gonna depend on the buoyancy of your presentation and the clarity of your water, okay? If you have a really buoyant lure like a rag and I run a 36 inch liter, depending on the current I'm fishing in, that thing may float up well out of the strike zone of the fish that I'm targeting. If the water's not that high and the current's not that fast and I got a pretty buoyant leader, uh, lure, I may want to shorten that leader down to about an 18 to 20 inch leader, which is only going to allow it to rise so high in the water column, keeping it in the strike zone of where the fish are at. I'm going to add my scent to that reg. I'm going to run that one or size one-aught hook and uh, that's going to get it done as I, as I drift through that through the water column. Now, when you're drift fishing, Here's the key to drift fishing. I'm looking out at the water and it's moving from my right to my left. I'm going to cast upriver at about a 45 degree angle. The current's going to start carrying that presentation back towards me to where it's going to at some point be straight out in front of me. Uh, as it is dropping, it begins to contact bottom about every yard or so. As that line comes sweeping through, I collect my uh, slack in the line so I can feel that rod tip just following the bottom contour, okay? Now, when I begin to put that presentation out there, I don't cast all the way across the river. I need to fish the near water to my side first. So I'm gonna throw it out up river on the inside. You'll see where that current seam is breaking out there. And that soft water on the inside of that current seam is a very good starting point of where fish like to hold. I'm gonna toss that out there, let it drift through, collect my slack, come and I'm gonna follow the rod tip down river with my line. I'm going to follow my line down river. Now the biggest mistake a lot of folks make when they first start drift fishing is they'll get about two-thirds of the way through their drift. It'll drop off the inside of the current and next thing you know uh, they start reeling in. And that's the biggest mistake you can make because a lot of times as that drops in off of the current it will uh, lie there for a second. That's where fish are going to come over and pick it up. So you don't necessarily want to reel that in too quickly. You want to allow that to come off of the current edge, sit for just a little bit, see if a fish doesn't pick it up at the end of the drift and start giving you something to, something to feel. Now you're going to repeat that. You're going to cast out a little further. You're going to let it swing through the drift. Again, it's going to break past the current. It's going to slow down and just kind of stop, settle in that soft water, leave it sit. You've cast it further. It actually pendulums downriver a few feet further than your previous cast. You're going to cast mid-river, okay? You're going to only cast out to the water that's moving fast as maybe that you would like to walk is what they usually reference. If it's really raging on the other side, don't even waste your time. Don't need to throw it over there. First of all, it's not going to get down to bottom because it's moving too fast with your weight. Secondly, as it gets to the tail end, it's just going to pendulum up and come out of the strike zone. So you got to kind of pick your battle. So work that stretch of water from inside to out take steps 10, 15 feet down river, repeat the process, 45 up, let it swing through, let it drop off the inside of the current seam, let it sit, let those fish come and pick it up, let them come to you, and uh, when you feel that fish pick it up and start bouncing your rod tip, you need to set the hook pretty darn aggressively. It's not like we have a float that they can take down that you can see, it's not like they're just picking it up and swimming along with it. You need to feel that fish, you need to reel down, get the slack out of the line and give them a good pop, really bury that hook, okay? That's a typical drift fishing setup. Again, I like a nine, nine and a half foot rod. Six to 15 for me gets it done all day long. One of my favorite line weights of rods to fish steelhead. So uh, some other options we have.